you know, we're friends with the Bucks. We're friends with Chris Jericho. We're friends with Kenny Omega now. And we've spoke with them a lot. Um, but honestly, nothing ever came up, you know, and, and Scott Demore hit us up the day we got released. And he's been very, 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 very open with the fact that he wanted, they wanted to bring us to impact. All right, there we go. A pair of good brothers joining me. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. I uh, remember when you asked us about AEW back, I think, is it in Phoenix? At the Royal <laughs> yeah, Rumble? Rumble. And, yeah. and, we, and we probably gave you a smart-ass answer because we're like, why the fuck is he asking us about AEW? Like, <laughs> clearly, we clearly want to leave. Away. Yes, we clearly don't want to be here. We want to be there, but we talk about it then. And hey, you were forced to know something that we should have taken, right? How about that? Well, look, hindsight's twenty twenty now, and uh, you guys are in a great position now, especially coming off a of Slammiversary. That was a really, really exciting pay per view. It, it was, was fun. Um, yeah, the the buzz was real on that thing, and it just our, our countdown uh, our countdown worked. Um, like you said, I think our podcast worked out great. All the surprises coming in um, after we were announced, and then the roster just uh, stood up and showed out, and. Um, for the new eyes that came on it, I think that we, we hooked some viewers. So I think it's very cool. So if, it was you know, exciting, man. Yeah. If yeah. the last no, time I talked to yeah. you guys, which was Royal Rumble last year, you, you wanted to go to AEW. There was talk of this. You guys were close. You guys were very close. So yeah. why not AEW this time around? Well, September of 2019, uh, we had been talking and talking and talking to them. Uh, there was a very, very, very generous offer on the table. And then, you know, WWE does what WWE sometimes does. And they backed the bank truck up to the house and gave us a guarantee that was, uh, I guess, too nice at the time for us to pass on, knowing that it wasn't the right decision. But um, now I can honestly say that everything does happen for a reason because we're happy with, with how things turned out. But it sucked that we... Um, we were that close to leaving and we didn't and we didn't bet on ourselves and we, we stuck around and we took their money and uh, we saw what happened when the, when the pandemic occurred. And, you know, I think that when certain people who we've already spoke on, we don't need to go back over it again are trying to save, you know, five or six talent that maybe their money adds up to the two of us. Uh, we got put on a list we might not have originally been on and, Hey, it is what it is. But now here we are. Slammiversary was a smashing success. The TV tapings were great. And we're headed to Talk and Shop a Mania. Well, I think quickly, I, I think Chris was asking if why we didn't go to AEW now. Oh, I was just giving a political right. answer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, honestly, I don't know how, how I don't know if AEW is like throwing out any kind of offers right now in the middle of this global pandemic. And like, you know, we're friends with the Bucks. We're friends with Chris Jericho. We're friends with Kenny Omega now. And we've spoke with them a lot. Um, but honestly, nothing ever came up, you know, and and Scott Demore hit us up the day we got released. And he's been very, 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 very open with the fact that he wanted they wanted to bring us to impact. And they had an, an offer for us within, you know, couple of days after of, of getting released and it was in it i wasn't dying to go back and wrestle again because wwe kind of sucked some shit away from my brain of even wanting to wrestle and like he he he, he pushed it really hard I mean, and he, he made he made it something that we wanted to do and so it impact literally courted us so well that we were that's where we chose to go and we were in it's it turned out good turned out fun great well, you guys talked on your podcast, Talking Shop, about how you never thought that your name would be on this list. I mean, you're coming off of WrestleMania, you guys were part of the Boneyard match. You thought that when there were going to be releases, there was no way, especially after you guys signed your deal, that you would be released. No chance. I would have bet my house on it. Good thing I would. I, 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 I was. I had my. I don't know about my house. house. That's a big ass house, man. I don't. Yes. Want, I don't want at, to lose but it. At, at, at that time, <laughs> I mean, well, okay, maybe not. Like when I saw the Vince video, right, of him saying we're gonna have to lay some people off, be some furloughs, and like, my first thought was like, what the fuck's a furlough? And I, so I looked it up real quick, and I googled furlough. I was like, furlough, lay him off for a little bit, and then come back. I was like, hmm. Well, there's no, I mean, no. Nah. And I went downstairs, and I, I was holding my baby, and I said, Ma or Teeny, like my, my wife. I go, Hey. I, Vince just put out this video about maybe laying some people off, but 
I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel confident. I feel confident. You know, I remember that. I remember that day, and I remember the video. And I was downstairs in the gym working out, and then I went and sat in the sauna. And we were texting with a few of our buddies in a separate text group, and they were going, "Oh man, I'm really worried." I saw the video. I saw the video, and we were like consoling them, like you know, uh, hey, wrestling's gonna, you know, this pandemic's gonna be over. There'll be plenty of places for you guys to go. Well, here was a good Not one. Thinking though. we're gonna be on the fucking list. We're just here was a really them, good. Brothers one. are gonna be fine. You know, there's, there's a lot awesome. of options now. And well, then Hawkins, we get fucking called. <laughs> well, Hawkins tells us he got he, Hawkins goes. Hawkins got fired, brother. He caught he talked to the third person. You know, they, <laughs> they, they got the Hawkins, and we were like, "Damn, you know, I'm sorry, Hawkins." Exactly. But like, I mean, yeah. you know, you haven't been on TV in a while. I probably saw it coming, right? I mean, we're thinking that's what you're thinking, poor guy. Like, fuck, yeah. you're gonna be okay. Then I look down, I see Carano, Carano ringing my phone. I went, mm, "Nah, hold on, this, this, what the fuck?" Then I talked to him, right? And then he, he says, "Like, fuck, it, business man, it's all good." And Gallo sees the call. He answers it and goes, and what did what Carano say? I just got off the phone with your partner. And Gallo goes, for what? For what? <laughs> and he, goes, Bro, he, didn't even, he just he stuck Carano. I got some bad news. And I go, are you fucking kidding me? Us? And he goes, I'm sorry, buddy. And I went, what the fuck? Hey. And then I, I just, I know how, how hard and shitty that job can be. So I wasn't even mad at him. I just wanted to hang up. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. you know, us being us, uh, I knew that, Carl did not see it coming that Chad did not see it coming. So I went straight into Carney brother mode and called and got us booked in Peru and Spain because we thought the world would be open by now. We were just going to be doing a world tour. <laughs> he said, Don't worry, brother. We're going to Peru and Spain for signings. I got this amount of money and I'm also going to run a pay-per-view in my backyard. You can be involved in that or you're not. We're either one. I don't care. I'm running the pay-per-view. And I go, what are you talking about? What, what are you talking let, about? Let this wrap around Why? my head real quick, please. I just got canned. Yeah. Well, and then I got a, I got a text from Big E. I don't think I even said this ever. I saw a text from Big E. Like, I remember I was up in my room, like just going, "What the fuck just happened?" And then Big E wrote, "I'm so sorry, Chad. Like, you know, I, good luck, bro. I love you." And I was like, "How does he know?" You know. And then I realized that they they put it on their website. I just did. I go, "Oh no, the whole world knows." So then I go outside and like. <laughs> I'm working out outside just trying to get my head right. I'm thinking the neighbors are looking at me like I'm a, like I'm a jobless asshole. Everyone thinks I'm a loser. Oh, this is terrible. And I was so pissed. <laughs> like, Why the fuck would they put it on their website, man? Why do they got to make it like that? You know. And then I realized, I, 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 I realized you're a celebrity. That's what happens. That's how I made it feel that way. So the first move after after the call, after finding out you released, is picking the pieces up and trying to figure out where you can get booked immediately. Oh yeah, I, I'm not. I don't believe in a rearview mirror at all, and I've been through this before, and I, I wasn't worried at all. I know that we have, you know, a big following. We have good buzz. People would want to see us, and then it was just like, well, how do we capitalize on this negative, turn it into a positive? And uh, I went to work right away. I've been busier in the last three months than I've ever been in my life because of all the side business stuff with putting out the beer, with the podcast, with putting together this ridiculous pay per view that we're gonna run. Um, and then, you know, the overseas bookings and negotiating with impact and, and getting, you know, them being very accommodating, putting all the stuff into that deal that we wanted. So we'd be able to eventually return to new Japan when the world's open and, you know, lots of other stuff like that. And it's just, uh, I felt like I had a real job for the first time ever because I'm on zoom calls and I'm yeah. working the phone and I'm talking to these business guys and I'm pitching TV shows and all this shit that we've never really done before. But I mean, why the hell not? And it's all, uh, it's all working out really well. So, yeah, cause we thought the hustle side, we, you know, we, we hustled when we were the, with the bullet club selling bullet club shirts and taking our, you know, and we made as much money as we possibly could cause we have families and that's all like, you, you got to just try to make as much as you can. Right. Sure. And so like when you, when you sign with WWE, you're just like, well, I mean, let's just, here we go. Let's just collect the check, sure. do what we can. And like five years of just waving that WWE flag and, and not having to go out and do these side hustles. But yeah, as soon as we got that release, man, Gallows was on it, bro. I mean, I always missed the hustle. I had a secret it, wrestling promotion that I owned the whole time I was in WWE. I just lied about it. <laughs> yeah. It just like, it just, I, I, I don't always love the hustle. I, I like that nice little paycheck coming in and just relaxing and, and just yeah, like, yeah, but don't you like all that nice extra brother money that I send your way? 100, 100%. Like, I, I'm a brother, man. So I like to, it's been fun. It's just been, you know, trying to get back into the hustle mode again. And I mean, we're fully back in now, but. So when you guys signed the five-year deal, was it like, all right, like we're we're allowed WWE lifers. We're going to end up retiring there. 
Well, yes. I mean, that's that's what we were told. Um, you can never full on believe anything that you hear in this business, I don't think. But we, we yeah. really, really, really wanted to believe that and that to be true because we're like, well, this is five years. I mean, not two years, not three years. Five years is a long term commitment to anything. I mean, which was still hard. It was a lot of money. I never had a girlfriend for five years. Yeah. Let alone sign a wrestling contract or a marriage. Hey, it was. <laughs> it was, <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> hey, it was still hard to sign that five year deal. Like, because that's a five years. I'm thinking, like, man, five's a long time. And like, we weren't. In, in, hey, the WWE was great to us. Just like we weren't. We weren't always. It's a really grind. That schedule, man. That schedule is brutal. And so we were thinking, like, man, should we just have done the three years? But then, like, let's just collect on this money. Let's you just know, get all really, that money. Yeah. In yeah, and like, say that to each other, we go, hey, we can do whatever we want when it's over, but that's that's lay down money. We've both been pretty smart. We'll be done if we want to be. I mean, we'll want to go out and do little brother signings and hang out with the boys and shit yeah. like that, but we won't have to do anything. We'll just chill. It'll be done with. You know, we can do and, whatever, make yeah, an appearance like, here and there. But uh, and they didn't say you'll never get fired, and they, and they didn't say, I promise you, you'll never be fired. It's just like, you know, I, it, I just felt like. In September of 2019, we had a lot of quote unquote leverage, man. And like we yeah. we could have left WWE happily, happily, and and we could have made a lot of money outside and, and we didn't bet on ourselves. That's why I'm so proud of the uh I mean we did, we're we're going to, we're we're continuing to now, but I'm so happy for the for the revival or for FTR to be able yeah. to have left left on their they own terms. Right. They did their own yeah. way. Yeah. You, did, yeah. you did it right. I mean, I messaged them right away and said that's perfect boys. That's the way to do it. That you did it yourself. If you're not happy somewhere, you, you just you can't take the money, man. You just, yeah. you know, it's hard, hard to explain, but. Well, I, well, you also had one of your best friends there, AJ Styles, which played a big part in this. If AJ worked for a different company, you think you'd even be interested in signing for five years? And I don't want to put it all on AJ, but AJ was very, very, very influential in us staying. And and that's not. Highly influential. That's, not a, think, wrong, that's not a bad thing. He, you know. Sure, he but he, did, he didn't brother. know either. And I think that's why he felt so bad about it. And it's not, we're grown men. It's nobody else's responsibility, but he just was like, I feel so bad. I convinced you guys to stay and, and told you everything was going to be all right. And then it wasn't, but we were not mad at him. We were never mad at him for two seconds. I mean, it's, it's, it's wrestling, it's entertainment. And I mean, the wheel keeps on turning and the, the fun part for me, maybe not as much for Chad right out of the gate was I was like, well, how do we make that much money? and wrestle less and do all this fun outside shit. And I've gotten a big kick out of doing that. And I think we're actually going to do better. So, I mean, there's something to be said for all that too. And, uh, you know, you just have to, you have to kick it into gear and become a businessman and, uh, and put it all out there. And I think that's exactly what we're doing. So, I mean, you know, that's just being a good friend, you know, that, that he felt bad because he's a real human being. Unlike, you know, some people we've come across in this business that we discussed in an earlier interview. Uh, so, I appreciate him feeling that way, but we never placed any blame on him for it because he thought it was going to be as great as they were telling us it was going to be. So it, it is what it is. And he saw the amount of money and went, guys, I mean, that, you know, I agree. That's your lay down money. So if he would have gone to AEW to answer your question, yep, yeah, we would have gone. We would have been out of there because he, because he, his contract was up too in January and we could have, it could have right. all, it could have been, uh, it all went together kind of thing. We could have been behind it. Yeah. How close do you think he was to going to AEW? You know, he, he's on a different level than us, right? So he, he reached a different top guy WWE thing. There's a different kind of – there's a different level up there, and he's working with different kind of money than we're working with and working with different kind of creative than we were working with. Um, so I don't know how close he got to leaving. I don't know. Because um, they, they, they treated – they always treated AJ Styles properly. He's a few years – he's a few years older than us, and when – you know, in confidence, he told us what his offer was. It was like, I mean, no matter how good it is outside, that's going to be really hard to ever say no to anybody giving you that money. I mean, it's just, it just is. I just signed that and quit after a year. I mean, <laughs> same. Just out of the head. <laughs> Gallows, after your first run in WWE, did you ever think that you'd be back there? No, no. I always said that when we were in Japan that I'd never go back. Um, wouldn't be welcomed back and wouldn't want to go. So really? when uh, this was all coming up at the end of 15, we sat in a room in Japan and we took a vote and uh, Chad and AJ voted yes. And I voted no. And they were like, what? And I was like, no, I know how it is. You don't want to do that. 
yada, yada, yada. But it was for different reasons than what it ended up being. It was, you know, I didn't like the locker room, but I was a kid in my 20s when I was there the first time. And I went back, and the talent were all great. We, we love and miss a lot of those boys and girls. Um, but uh, it was a different atmosphere, you know, when we got back. But the problem wasn't any of that stuff. It was just the creative hurdles of the start and stop all the time and the little push and then the little this and this and this. And there was never any – sustained momentum for us was kind of what ended up being the problem. But to answer the question, no, I didn't think it'd ever be back. I just look at the, I, I, I look at the Festus character and can't believe <laughs> that that's you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what were the original discussions like around that? I mean, it literally. Well, tell them your Vince meeting. Yeah, I was 23 years old. And basically they told me to uh, kind of get out of shape. And this was the character that they had for me. Originally we were going to be hillbillies, which I didn't, I was like, I mean, how far is there is this like hillbilly thing going to be able to go? Because originally Gordy was teaming with Henry Godwin. So anyway, then I became the hillbilly. We cut this hillbilly promo that we came up with and they're like, okay, you guys are going to be the hillbillies. I'm like, all right, that's whatever. And then we're getting ready to debut. We're in the ring saying we're going to do this, this, and this. And it's like 20 minutes before doors. And they go, Vince McMahon wants you guys in his office. Are we getting fired already? So we go in the office and Vince is literally uh, like, Hey, Big man, can you do this? And I'm literally trying to make this face back at him. Not like that, like this. And we do the Festus face to each other for 10 fucking minutes. And uh, <laughs> finally he explains to me that he wants me to portray this catatonic character and the bell triggers him and he goes wild and kicks everyone's ass. And then he hears the bell again and he's back to uh, being catacon catatonic, so to speak. So, you know, I... <laughs> It's when you grow up thinking you're going to be like a long haired wrestler with a beautiful robe and this cool guy and you become festive. It's not exactly ideal, but to be that young and to be on television, you know, that was a character. Like I was talking to Hawkins about it. Like Everyone it was a good little mid card act. Everybody, it was so simplistic that everybody knew what it was. The kids knew when the bell rang, he goes nuts. When the bell rang, he goes nuts, whatever. And it always got a good reaction. It just, there was never going to be longevity to it, but I mean, bought me my first house. So I, you know, it was, it was, was what it was. It could have been longevity to it. It's, it's all up to how long they want to make it long, longevity. Well, how long, yeah, how long there, they there was make no it. coming yeah. out of Festus and becoming something else yeah. in a long storyline. We needed, be put we needed into that. Festus versus Eugene. That's what we needed. Yeah, dude, Eugene was great too. You know what's funny? What? You can't find I'm Festus or Eugene and... in the uh, history books anymore because they're just not, <laughs> not that applicable. Is That's is so funny that that character. Not only wouldn't work in 2020, it's not even acknowledged in 2020. It's gone. Yeah. Acknowledged. Yeah. So, <laughs> wow. So, with your current setup with Impact, you're still able to do stuff for New Japan? Yeah. 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 That's yep. Got it all. Yeah. It's actually written into our contract that, you know, yep. and, and Impact's even going to work around, like, because, you know, everything for them basically is TV tapings, right? So, we're going to be able to work around dates and, New Japan is is has told us what dates that they want us to come and this and that and so it's all that's all exciting too. When, once that you know they're they're starting to open up doing live shows again, right? Yeah, but it's, yeah. It's gonna be when the borders are open again because I think if you if we went now we'd have to go two weeks before a show and like be quarantined and I don't want to be just chilling at a hotel for. But that that might be worth it to wrestle in front of a crowd though. Don't get me wrong, now it'd be fun to be in to, to yeah. in Japan for two weeks to be honest, but like gotta kayfabe that from the wife. It should be fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> just, sitting in, just sitting in a room for two weeks. Do we know how close they are to having shows with fans again? They're having shows with fans right now in Osaka. They had I, I, the different cities have different um, different uh, parameters. Yeah. So like Osaka, is like having like twenty five percent people are in there, and they all have to wear their masks. But they had a, I think when Evil became champion recently uh, over Naito, there was a crowd, and so it, it, it's 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 going to get. They're better than them than the Americans and in, in, in handling this thing. So it's going to be they're gonna better than Americans. In a lot of things, but they're going to, they're, they're going to handle this. They handle this thing properly. And, and they're not going to let people just come flying into the, into the, into the country without, you know, some kind of measurements. Do you think about what your debut would have looked like if this was a world where there were fans at shows right now? Absolutely, man. That was, I felt that was the only regret we had about the whole Slammiversary deal and, and like that whole show because like that Motor City Machine Guns, uh, that was smartly booked right out of the gate. You're going to bring yeah. those guys out there and have this big surprise. Like they would have got a hell of a reaction. I think we would have got a hell of a reaction. A, a, a lot of stuff on that show 
Um, but, but nobody got to hear that. So I, you know, I guess it's, it's kind of a, it's because if there was no pandemic, I don't feel like we would have gotten canned because I had first class flights all over the whole world, going to South Africa, going to Australia, going to Japan, all throughout this whole summer and, and even into the fall. But that's why if you see me talking to Gallows when we debuted, I'm, what I'm saying to you, like the music is playing, you can't hear what we're talking to each other. I go, man, imagine if there's a crowd here right now with a pop we would have gotten. It, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I said. Yeah. Because we, we, we proved to ourselves that we're a legitimate draw, so that's all we needed. Of course. Yeah. By the way, those first-class seats, especially on the uh, overseas flights where you get to lay flat. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, well, that, that was better than the pod. That was uh, absolute uh, essential in the, in the next deal, in the, in, the, in the deal that we signed. So, and we got it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. And some at some point, you'll be flying to Japan, uh, hopefully, in your yeah. first-class pod. In the, in the first class. Oh, Rocky knows that. Yeah. He's yeah, our Rocky friend. He's our talent relations. I don't, and we haven't discussed that yet, but he knows that's coming. <laughs> yep. He knows we're going to pick on him about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you guys surprised by the how much the podcast has taken off? Talking Shop is not only one of the top wrestling pods in the world, one of the top podcasts in the world as of right now. Yeah. We because like we know that we just because like you know we just sit on here and talk with you right and like we just we enjoy just bullshitting and talking and like having beers and and just relaxing that's what we like to do in the hotel room after a show anyway and that's what that's what talking shop was was built on was you know me gallows rocky the young bucks we would all sit in the room and we'd get beers and then the young bucks would just watch us get drunk and then we would just talk and we would tell everybody how and we tell each other how great we are all the time. And so it's like, we, like, we, we got to make this a podcast. Like, I'm the best wrestler in the world. Young Bucks, you guys are the best tag team in the world. Oh, hell yeah, we are. We know we are. Gallows is the best big man. He's the funniest. Look at him. And Rocky's a great little cruiserweight man. Look how good he is. And we're just sitting, we just put each other over the whole fucking time. And it was like, we got to turn this into a podcast. And it turns that's why into it's, it's, it's called Talk and Shop. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really what we're doing. Hey, you guys want to get beers and go to the room and talk shop? Fuck yeah, I want to go to the room and talk shop. Of course. It's love just, that. yeah. It's basically it's, like hanging out with us because we have no format ever so <laughs> that's why we had to bring in ryan satin to actually kind of do like our our shoot interview if you will because if it was just us we would never would have covered any of that we would have no. just been talking shit and making jokes back and forth and getting drunk so we yeah, had to have and, some semblance and of telling each other and order. telling each other how cool we are man you you look cool out there man <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i like one flight from england to new york we we had me and gallo sat Right next to each other, and we were, we, and we just, we were just sipping drinks the whole entire flight. I mean, the whole nine hours, and the whole time we're just going, ah, man, look how cool you look with your beard. <laughs> and, they go, and I go, man, look at people looking at us, man. We look so cool the whole, got, the whole nine hours. You got four sons. What a badass motherfucker you are. Good no, show, man. Cool as shit. <laughs> then, then we got to New York, and we're like, oh. Uh -oh. oh. <laughs> 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 What's the go-to drink when you get on a plane? Well, oh, it depends, I guess. I, I think you can always go with a nice little bit of the little bit of the blood. Go with, go with some nice red wine. Sip on that. Nice even keel. Maybe yeah, a cold beer every now and then. But the home drink, drink because, because I have to be in that coffee mug there. Yeah, I got I get my little Jim Rome coffee mug too. There we go. Right there we go. Sipping on coffee to keep myself awake, baby, because I didn't sleep well. I, I was laying in bed last night. My six year old gets on my right side. My eight-year-old gets on my left side, and I'm just trying to hook. I'm trying to hook up with mommy the whole time, and then nothing, nothing. These kids keep messing up my whole entire night. <laughs> Little shits. Maybe tonight. <laughs> Maybe tonight. tonight I, don't, I, don't, yeah, I don't. I don't think she's dying for it. I think at home though, it's a high boot cocktail. What a high boot cocktail is: a lot of vodka, diet anything, squeeze of citrus. That's the way to do it. We call that the high boot cocktail on the road. That is deemed after the big LG because. Uh, you know, it's just what we like to do. Low sugar, yeah. low carbs, lots of alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I got to try this Friday night here while we're recording. Yeah, I would cocktail it up, good brother. Yeah, I'm sure just that here in Los Angeles, that'll cost about $27. Oh, you can oh, make sure. it home. Just get some Tito's and just remember, a lot of vodka, diet anything, little squeeze of citrus. Little squeeze of citrus. What part of LA are you in? I'm in Studio City. Oh, oh nice. Yep, closer. I think Rocky's in... Uh... Oh man, where's he at? Uh, begins with a P. Uh, Pasadena. Yep. There you go. And uh, Ryan Satin's actually like one city away here. I like guess could have a little brother party. You should yeah, could. Sure. Yeah, just sit six feet away and wear masks, right? That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So Gallows, you're going by Doc Gallows. Yeah, uh, we we copyrighted by Carl Anderson. Yeah. 
We, we trademarked a bunch of stuff with Michael Dawkins, our world famous wrestling trademark lawyer, because we knew yeah. we started doing that back in September because we knew we, when we left, we wanted to have our own shit. So I own the big LG. I own Doc Gallows. We own Talk and Shop. We own Good Brothers. He owns Machine Gun, Carl Anderson. Uh, there's a laundry list of them and a lot of lawyer bills, but it was worth it. So. A, a lot of lawyer bills. My, my, my wife was talking about it today. Hold on a second. Um, <laughs> You know, it, I think it's cool that, like, if, if you look back on when we debuted, um, I think we were the first couple of guys, with along with AJ, that were able to, you know, keep our names. Like, yeah. a lot of uh, – I remember Seth Rollins bringing it up to me. You guys got to keep – you know, he might not remember this, but he's like, you guys got to keep your names. You know, what the fuck, you know, because we – you know, we have this – I mean, Carl Anderson, I built this thing for eight years in Japan and yeah. a couple – six years before that in Los Angeles and – on the independent scene. And so now that we have this, I mean, it, it, it's so helpful to not, to not have to leave WWE and then change my name to Chad or something like this is so people yeah. know who Carl Anderson is. And then I can throw the machine gun on top of that and give myself, leave. it's just, I'm just happy that we have that. You know, absolutely. But Luke, you did, or you didn't want to go by Luke Gallows. Luke was a name that they had given to me or I, I forget how, but somehow whenever I was doing the deal with punk, the Luke thing came up. And then whenever I was out of WWE after that, it was always Doc, and I always called myself the Big LG. So I just went ahead and bought both of them, and uh, now they're mine. So no one can fucking take it. <laughs> you know, you guys talk about your debut, and it was there was you know you guys made a mark when you debuted in WWE, and then stuff fall, fell off like relatively quickly. Yeah. From your perspective, what was it that caused things to fall off? It, we just were never booked consistently, man. We would get that, like, they those WWE terms, like the shot in the arm or the fresh coat of paint. Well, when we were sitting here going, guys, we wouldn't keep needing these fresh coats of paint and shots in the arm if we could just have some consistent fucking booking. Like, you win the titles, and then the next week you lose in two minutes in a singles match, or you're, you win a trophy, and then the next week you're off TV, and the week after that you lose to so-and-so. And it's just not that we cared about always winning, but we would have liked to have had some, if we would have had some momentum with the booking, we could have kept the momentum with the little things that we were able to, you know, kind of get over on our, our own, like the, the nerds thing, the hot Asian wife thing. These are all things that we just said and inserted. Nobody wrote them for us because we were like, we don't, they're not giving us anything. We have to do something so that people have a reason to react because we're not the cool, badass um, G and a bullet club guys anymore. We're, kind of a watered down WWE version that they're not all the way committed to. So it was, um, I don't know. I guess that's from my perspective. Just, I mean, bad booking. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it brother. I mean, you can, I mean, we, we got a couple, we got things over that, you know, probably weren't supposed to be over. Um, I mean, there was some, like, there was some, you know, I, I remember, uh, like, Ed Kosky was head writing, um, <laughs> head, head writing, like, you know, what do I got to say, really? I, mean, I don't want to bury him, but what the fuck does anybody, what does he know, you know, nothing. Anyway. <laughs> remember that, remember the time in catering when, when, when we go, hey, Ed, do you have a minute? And he goes, no, not really. And we, we went, yeah. End of the day, who the fuck is that costume? You know? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that Vince was not familiar with your work in New Japan? A hundred percent not. Yeah, no. probably so. not. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just you got to have people in there. You got to have people in the meetings, you know, that have your back, and you got to people in the meetings pushing for you. And I just, I just think that we just didn't, we didn't have enough of that. Um, you know, but we kept sneaking, we kept sneaking in certain places, and we kept, you know, we kept getting getting sprinkled in throughout the four years so it ended up it ended up being okay um we uh we actually we heard that from a friend of ours in the meeting who wasn't a creative guy he goes it's not that anyone's in there burying you guys but uh no one's going to bat for you you don't have any gallows and anderson guys and a lot of the people who are getting consistent stuff and consistent you know decent to good booking they have somebody raising their hand and going well how about so and so and we just we never had that i don't think so yeah or like you know somebody might might pitch us for people, you that then you might that my say and like, nah, let's not use them there. Like for example, and then you know, next thing you know, you just get thrown off. It's just, it's just such a long creative process and so much stuff that goes into this thing. And we just, we just weren't there, guys. And it is what it is. It's fine. Well, was, yeah. was there like a particular match or pay per view where you're like, 
if only they had put booked us this way, if only we had gone over on this tag team, things would have been way different for us. There, there's a couple of different things, but I remember once like they said that we needed a shot in the arm, right? And it was the Dudley Boys last last uh, show, like. And in, that, in that was that was a time. I, I want to say this. That was a time someone did yeah. say that for us. I remember Fit. Fit was the one who got that for us because he knew us and thought we were good. And he said, "These guys need something." Now go ahead. I went ahead and cut. Yeah, you off. That's it, yeah. But it was like their not their retirement, but it was like their last show in the WWE. They were saying goodbye, maybe, and then we you know we came in from behind and we beat the shit out of them. And like we gave Bubba the, the the magic killer on the floor, and we put Diva onto a table, and we stood tall over the Dudley Boys. And then, you know, we get a promo next week, and we're not even, and we we sadly have to clear things a lot of times. And we and they didn't even want us to we say, we to say that we yeah. we did that. We finished off. Like, yeah, we we killed we we killed the Dudleys. We retired the Dudleys. Or they, they didn't even want us to say that. Yeah, so weird. And uh, another one was the, the the old day thing. Like we got. We heard through the grapevine like we got heat for how bad that segment was. Well, of course it was a bad segment. You took four, three or four extras who've never been on national television. They're nervous as shit to walk out on Monday Night Raw, and you give them three pages of lines. They're not actors. They're barely wrestlers. No offense. They're we got back to remember, and we got back to Gorilla and like Triple H even said that. Dude. He goes, "We need better writers." I'm thinking, no shit. <laughs> but it's just like, like everyone knows that. But that, that that was just a couple different segments. But like you just you, you you can't complain about those little things. It's just you got to be with one of their guys. And I just yeah, I guess we ultimately we just weren't their guys. And I don't mean be got old somewhere and came in. It's just it is not you got to you don't have to be chosen or anything like that. It's just we just weren't who they wanted to be on on top, you know, or be involved all the time. Well, now you have the opportunity to be whatever you want in Impact Wrestling. I feel like they're giving you yeah. as much creative control that you want yeah and that's gonna be a lot of fun it's a nice feeling it's nice that when they give you a promo that they didn't stick lines in our faces they let us just be us and that's that's what we've wanted the whole time so it's it's good scott the more knows us too like you know he he's he watched he was in tokyo when i had some big main event matches and like you know he 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 has he's watched me and gallows have big tag matches in front of you know a lot of people at the tokyo dome like yeah so so it's that he knows what we got he knows what we can do and he knows what the what the and do it. He knows now that we're a proven legitimate draw with the way the anniversary was all over the place. So we're hope, we're already looking for, towards the 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 next contract for the Rays already. So yeah, we've already, we already, asked, we already asked for the Rays. About, about, yeah, we want to stay with it. Now we're we're all in. Yeah, it, we, we we want Impact to be to go into the future for as long as possible. We want to work for the next twenty five years with Impact. So there you Absolutely. go. Wow, twenty five more years with impact. Twenty five more years. I I asked Triple H for a, I asked Karan, Mark Carano and Triple H for a lifetime contract, seventy five grand a year, lifetime. Gallus goes, she's making you up it a little bit. I said, I don't give a shit, man. I'm going to live till I'm ninety. That's a multi million dollar contract, brother. <laughs> Just keep the money coming. <laughs> That was, one of his, that was one of his least funny jokes that he ever said, but he would say that to their faces all the time. And I'm going, what? I don't. I don't see so why Carano this is funny. Said, oh, but Triple H said, yeah. So we need to talk. But then. <laughs> see what happened <laughs> what do you think uh what do you think is different about impact this time around uh, there just seems to be more of a buzz from a, an outsider's point of view but what's different for you guys you know you're there well the buzz is us of course <laughs> of course yeah yeah i mean the, the buzz the buzz is real the buzz happened and now it's all about carrying on the momentum um the creative freedom is great. I think they have a, a roster that a lot of people have slept on. There's some great talent in there, and I think that it's going to elevate them. Uh, I saw a lot of people step up because anytime new people come in, the existing guard goes, hey, what the fuck? Let's step it up. And uh, that does nothing but create healthy competition, which I think is just going to continue to make the show better and better. And, I mean, we're already looking forward to Bound for Glory in October because we want to come out and have our first big classic on bound for glory we want all those eyes again on bound for glory and we want to tear the shit the fuck up and, and we're going to it's going to be great with the motor yeah, city man guns I, hey that'd be please scott management yeah the management man they like, who's in charge of their business business oriented guy like you know ed norhelm is is a is is a great business guy he knows what he's doing scott demore knows the wrestling business inside and out don cal is head of the creative teams like these guys are these guys have been in business for a long time. Talent inside the locker room, you know, I, I didn't even know a lot of them because when you're in that WWE bubble, you don't watch anything outside of it, right? or unless you just, you know, especially when you have a family, you don't give a shit at all to, to watch anything. Right. And so I, I was just getting familiar with some of these guys. 
and man, there's some good stuff there. And like, just give it a chance. Like <clears throat> it's, it's, it was surprising to me, you know? Don't and then now you got up. Hey, like, what did I say? What was the more said, uh, at, you know, after watching the North and the motor city machine guns that like, uh Oh, you guys would, you guys are down the totem pole now because they just had a five star match. And I said, Scott, you didn't bring us in for five star matches. You came in here just for people to look at us, brother. Want to see us. That's it. Yeah. yeah. We're just the draw, brother. That's it. <laughs> and said, oh, maybe like God. three and a half star matches. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, maybe two. Yeah. It don't need to be too long. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it under eight minutes, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I want to ask you guys about the boneyard match, and then we'll talk about the boner yard match after. Oh, that. that's going to be a classic instance. Most importantly, yeah. <laughs> the uh, how long did the boneyard match take to film? Well, we started All right night, when it got night. dark, and we were done at about five thirty in the morning. So it took the entire night. Yeah. And was it like yeah. it was scripted out, like move for move, word for word? Mm, no, not move not for move, I don't think. But there were spots in it and stuff like that. Um, Undertaker cut the hell out of his arm very early on and just like would wrap it up in between takes and keep going. But uh, there was a lot of it, it took all night. But I, you know, that being said, I get that because the masterpiece that we put together, uh, we had two 14 hour days in shooting that as well. So it, it just, especially when you're going cinematic like that and you're cutting for certain things. And, uh, you know, we probably had to cut because shit wasn't going right on our pay-per-view, but they had to cut for lighting and sound and every other thing that they do when they produce these WWE productions and stuff. But I mean, it, it took all night. I mean, really, it's, Taker sliced his arm on this on that limo when he, whenever he punched it, or that the hearse. Yeah, but like he, you could see like it was nasty, bro. And he didn't even he didn't sell it, man. I'd give it to him, and yeah. they kept cleaning. They would clean it up between each take, and then just fix it. And that was it. Keep going. Wow. Keep going. He probably had to have surgery or something. I think it was sure. Nasty, yeah, yeah. It was like there was like shit sticking out of his arm. I don't, I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> it wasn't a normal. If, had, if that happened to me, boneyard over. <laughs> give me the, give me to the ER, brother. His tattoos are gonna look pretty gnarly after that. I think so. Yeah, yeah. he's definitely gonna have to. Yeah. I don't know. Taker was great too. You know, putting that thing. It, it, that was the first. I got a chance. To, well, we worked with him a couple of times with like leading up to that match. But I mean, he was it, it was he was amazing it, 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 putting that thing together with and like him and AJ. Obviously, AJ is probably the best ever. And so watching him and AJ just like, talk these things out and. And just and just watching Taker work and and I think he even you know if maybe he likes it or not but no matter what I know he had to respect us after that a little bit because he knows we're not two dumbasses like we were there for him and took care of him and I know a couple of the minions or druids or whatever knocked him knocked him over because there was a couple of those guys that were under, under the druid hoods couldn't work with the fuck and he was pissed too <laughs> so I was like I think he was happy to get Gallows and Anderson touching him and whacking you know. I uh, think some of those druids need to go back to summer school. He said, "That's what it was." Yeah. <laughs> hey, he said, "That's a wrap on the druid." Or somebody said, "Wrap on the druids." He goes, "They need to go back to summer school." <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for the boneyard match, do you think you'd have been? Do you think talking shop mania would look as good as I'm assuming that it looks? I will say this: if there was no boneyard match, there would be no boner yard match. If there's no boner yard match, there's absolutely no talking shop mania because the rest there of that is. stuff sucks. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. bad. Um, <laughs> listen, when you guys turn, when you tune in August first, two thousand twenty nine p.m. Eastern, remember you're not watching this for a work rate professional wrestling pay per view. You're watching a parody. You're watching something that when the world is in a very dark place in a lot of ways. We're in the middle of a pandemic. There's social unrest everywhere. We love to entertain. We wanted to do something to make you guys happy, to make you smile, to make you laugh. It's all done with a wink. It's not meant to piss anybody off, even though it will. Um, so just enjoy that. Drink a couple beers, get your friends together, whatever it is that you do, sit back, relax. You can watch it on American Canadian pay-per-view. If you watch on iPay-per-view worldwide, it's available via the fight app. It's only $14.99. So you can't be that pissed off if you do hate it. You've wasted $14.99 on something at some time or another. Yeah. So uh just know that it was all done in jest. We have a lot of what we think are hilarious uh cameo appearances that we put in there. And the uh the boner yard match is epic. I don't know for what reason, but I know that it's epic. 
It, it, it's like watching Hot Shots, right? Or Hot Shots Part Two. Okay. One of our it's favorite good, movies, Hot Shots. Yes, that's a good way to go into this. Like, yeah. just understand that we're fucking just having fun, and and also understand that we had just gotten fired, so our brains are a little bit fried, <laughs> trying to figure out what the fuck are we gonna do. What the fun? <laughs> it's you know you say I mean, you fired. I mean, just fired, embarrassed. My neighbors read it all over the news, Bleacher Report. I mean, you're fucking embarrassing me. Fuck. You'll get over it. It'll be fine. Yeah, you're doing lunch outside, and people are going, how's he going to pay for his children to go to school? (laughs) (laughs) How's he going to pay for that big fucking house? He can't anymore. That's what they're saying. I know that's what they're saying. That's why I don't have neighbors, because I can't see my neighbors. They can say whatever the fuck they want. I'm just up here doing this. You know, they're telling their kids, you know, he doesn't have a job. (laughs) Yeah, you know, he's, we can't go over there and and bring the, we need to bring them food because they can't eat. Look at the jobless asshole. Let's take him a cake. There's the jobless asshole doing his lunges. Oh, boy. (laughs) Look Look at him cutting his own grass now. Why is he lunging anyway? He should be out looking for work. (laughs) <laughs> hope he enjoys that. Hope he enjoys that basketball court before they or that yeah, that's a little basketball goal before they come take it away from him. <laughs> hope he enjoys that truck he's driving around before they repo it or what is it called? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I wave to somebody in the neighborhood, they're like, oh poor guy. <laughs> oh, well. But if it, like you said, everything happens for a reason. If it wasn't for the pandemic, we wouldn't have talk and shop mania. We wouldn't have a boner yard match. Oh, we have we one have this interview. We wouldn't have this interview. That would definitely not happen because that's uh, certainly you know, not as candidly <laughs> <laughs> and certainly not as long either. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't have had because we just don't do, we didn't do anything when we were there. It's like, especially not on our own ever. No. I Except mean, except for the Jim Rome show, which they didn't want us to do the Jim Rome show because it's actually a good show and actually get them out a little bit. They wanted to keep oh, us off we of did that. It. Yeah. Of we did it anyway, though. We were always running a little bit on edge anyway with how we, acted there you, you guys weren't sent off to do the press days the media days like so many people are like three in the morning four in the morning of course we had to do those of course because they knew that we would do them and not bitch about it and do it and then, then it's, 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 they start thinking are we going to get a little run for, are we going to get a little something for this because we're doing these stupid monday morning ah, ah. 6 a.m calls you know excellent stone cold wow gallows <laughs> <Yeah, those letters. laughs> Is is but, there yeah. like so? Obviously, the the locker room is different. The vibe is different in Impact Wrestling, New Japan, obviously Indies. At what point in WWE did you go? Hmm, this is this is different. Day day one, because the Gallows had told me about it, and just once I saw I saw how big this thing is, man, and how and this creative process, and like these writers telling us day one what they wanted to do or, or something. And then I didn't, I'd see none of that ever happen. Or, and then I realized that it's not because he didn't want it to, but because this writer has to say it to this writer, then this writer has to say it to the head writer. Then that, that writer has to say it to Ed Koski. Then Ed Koski has to say it to the whole team. Then that whole team has to say it to Vince. And the right person has to say it to Vince for it to pass to Vince. Fuck. As confusing as it sounded is how that is. Yeah, I knew it was know, nothing else. The New Japan is just like you want you, you what you do, do it. WWE is a different ball game, man. A lot of you have to go through a lot of different avenues. Well, Impact Wrestling feel I, Impact. I've been been, been back, backstage at Impact Wrestling a few times, and it feels like Scott Demore is you know completely accessible. He's right there. Yep. Yeah. Completely. Hundred percent. Yeah, and that's and that's going to be the good thing because like when we want when we need something or want something like we just go to him and we just you know we bring it up and then he he either he'll say it's good or it's bad and like that's all we care about is to be able to hear our ideas out you know. Are there any tag teams that you guys haven't worked with that you still want to work with? The North and the Motor City Machine for sure. They're literally right there, you know. And and we'd like to. We had a we had a match with uh, FDR in Japan when we were with the WWE and it was a chance for both of us to actually work the way we like to work. And we had a, a fucking banger and it was f- awesome. And so I'd like to work them again outside of that. Outside, outside of WWE. Of WWE. Absolutely. And, yeah. Tear it up. And, and, and preferably in Japan. And that would be, that would be the hottest. Do you think most of the matches that we'll be seeing from you guys in impact will be you guys together? No, I think it's no. I think we'll do some tag stuff. We're both, yeah, we're both looking to do always be together, but do some singles stuff too. I think that 
Uh, there's some layers that people haven't seen of Carl for sure. Uh, from Japan, there's definitely some layers to me they haven't seen probably at all. Uh, so we're both really looking forward to that, to doing doing the tag stuff, but also doing our single stuff as well, and uh, probably form a kick-ass faction at some point too. I'm sure we're sure faction guys. We're Come definitely on. faction guys. We have to have guys around. So I mean, it's yeah. just fun. Take some bumps for us, laugh at our jokes, get our beers, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It sounds like the perfect thing. Now, right? whose idea was Countdown to Fucktown? I started well, just sounds putting, like a it on, putting it yeah. on social media, and then Chad and Rocker like, let's make it a thing. Let's do a real countdown. And we're like, oh, shit, what do we have here? And then we decided, you know, we'll do our boozing with the boys, which you can always join on patreon.com backslash talk and shop uh, as a lead yeah. in. And then at midnight, yeah. when the official moment hits that the no compete clause is up, the severance is done. Then we roll right into that that podcast that started at midnight with Ryan Satin, where we kind of told our whole story. Um, but it, it, it worked. Uh, the, the buzz really worked out great. Uh, the slam anniversary announcement was awesome. And then um, the momentum carried into the pay-per-view the next day and into the tapings and the TV that aired on Tuesday, I think. So it was uh, it was pretty cool. We were like, you know, fuck, we were like, I'm glad that like we signed with Impact because if we just our first thing was like, what are we going to announce? We didn't know. And then we were like, well, let's announce that. No, talking shop of Mania. I guess like, it's we'll announce talking shop of Mania. And the people would be like, Oh, come on. Man. That, like, come on. Talking shop Mania really? is awesome. It's going to be awesome. But I think they're, I'm happy that impact came in and we were able to do that because it, I think they actually moved the dates around too, to make it work right on that exact day. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting. And that was a fun day, man. We watched our Patreon numbers like fly up for like, you know, this, the uh, for this countdown is we was let, let's just drink for these two hours and midnight hits guys like let's go to our YouTube and, we'll, and you can watch that but let's just and then our Patreon numbers flew up and then our YouTube subscribers went up for us we had none we had like yeah we, just, we, 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 we didn't think about starting the YouTube before that which was probably a bad yeah. idea but <laughs> so whatever right but we now didn't we didn't know. we, now it's we were thing. hoping for yeah, like we, we were hoping for like that. maybe two thousand subscribers on YouTube for that interview we ended up getting like almost eight or nine for the interview so. Well, no, whoever's watching right now can subscribe to you guys on YouTube. I'll drop the link down below so they can do that. Yeah, perfect. I'm not, we're not even sure. What is. Yeah, Rock has everything. Rocky's our guy. So yeah. if, this was the, if this was the countdown to Fucktown, does that mean we are now residing in Fucktown? We are we in Fucktown. Fuck fuck but this now is countdown to Fucktown too because it was the first. So that we just went ahead and threw it in there. This week we're going nuts, and, and this is countdown to fuck town too. So we're, we're going to do boozing with the boys on Talking Shop or ba Patreon backslash Talking Shop at uh, eight p.m. From eight p.m. to eight fifty, we're just going to get all ourselves we get inebriated as we possibly can safely, so that when so that when we watch Talking Shop of Mania, we have to have a head change because you can't go into that sober unless you're a sober brother that gets it. But it, 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 get your head where you want it to be so that you can enjoy this with us all. So. If you want to do countdown to fuck town two with me live and you're in the Southeast, come to the Southern brewing company in Athens, Georgia, where I will be hosting the countdown. Oh, We're going to do a live watch along of talking shop of mania. And what that means is you can either laugh with me or when it's over and you hate it, you can laugh at me, but either way, yeah. you'll be able to do it right to my face. So join us, uh, Athens, Georgia, Southern brewing co. Uh, starting Saturday night, August the 1st at 8 p.m. If you're watching from home, live on pay-per-view or iPay-per-view via the Fight app, the show starts at 9 p.m. Eastern. And yeah. if you're fans with us, if you're fans of us at all, just buy it and then watch a boxing fight or something. I'll give it. But just, if you can't watch it, just buy it and then go watch ESPN if you don't feel like watching it. And if you're going to watch it with Gallows Live, buy it before you go to watch it with Gallows Live, please. Yes, give us please. the buys, baby. We need the buys. Forty ninety nine. You know, you know how crazy this is. Like, if you guys were breaking into the wrestling business, you know, when you started your careers, and you said, one day you guys are going to have your own pay per view. One day you guys are going to be drinking beers, and people are going to be listening to this, or drinking drinks, and people are going to be listening to this. One day people are going to be paying on this thing called Patreon. <laughs> it's just crazy to think about. I can't believe that Gallows didn't invent Patreon back in Japan. We would be fucking sitting nice, wouldn't we? We never would have had to go to New York. I should have thought of Patreon so much. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm pissed about that, actually. I just can't believe it wasn't. If, if we'd have had it back then, dude, we would have, man, we would have been just loving it in the Bullet Club. Absolutely. 
you know. Well, I want to be respectful of your time because I, I know you guys have a very important business call here coming up. So yeah, yeah, was thank you for making this happen. I really appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate oh, you, man. Yeah, Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. My son's going to really love that I did this interview. He watches all your YouTube stuff. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm you're one of the 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 few we like <laughs> interviews interviews are a lot for me oh, well they thank are. you thank you look it should just be hanging out not unlike your podcast just should just exactly. be a conversation let's say hey let's do a can we can you get, come on talking shop sometime you can crack open a that. canadian be beer a little molten ice I, oh molson ice wow oh baby i, I love a good molson ice that is a dangerous beer but yes <laughs> We, it's Better funny, they were one of the cheapest beers at the beer store, because in Ontario, you can only buy beer at the beer store. Beer store, yeah. And most of the were cheaper, but had more we alcohol. Know, yeah. So when my friends and I really wanted to get messed up, we'd buy Molson ice, and then we'd say, we're getting ice tonight. Then <laughs> uh, you get ice. That's so yes, I, sign me up. I'm come, I'll come on Talking Shop and get hammered. Let's do it, oh, please. Perfect. I love it. Love it. You, you let me know whenever. I will. I promise. Thanks for having us, good brother. Thank yeah, you. Talking Chop a Mania, August 1st. Hey, yeah, thanks for thanks for everybody for buying Slammiversary and making us look like the draws that we know we are. On the list of wrestlers that you'd want to have a beer with, I feel like Gallows and Anderson would be like right near the top of that. Couple of good brothers. So awesome hanging out with them. Thank you for hanging out with us. So excited to see what's in store for them in Impact Wrestling, both as a tag team and as individuals for the next two years. Well, I guess for the next 25 years, Anderson says they want to sign that 25 year deal, which is ironic because Impact Wrestling hasn't even been around for 25 years. But sure, we'll be talking about this in 2024. Uh, now you'll have to excuse me. I'm about to record a new episode of my podcast, which has the very original name of the Chris Van Vliet Show. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. There's, of course, a link down below where you can listen to this interview or any of the other interviews that I've done. So if you don't feel like looking at us, if you don't feel like keeping the YouTube app open for the whole time, podcast. Mm -hmm. That's your option. 